Today we're going to talk about silicon conformal coating. I didn't think I had to do this video because really there's so many of them on YouTube. But honestly, I had a, a lot of people ask me about it. How I use it, some tips and things that I've learned about it that I know are not mentioned in other videos because I've watched some of the other videos. And hopefully give you something more so this video is worth it compared to the other ones. Um, let me show you what we got here. I coat just about everything. I coat cameras, FCs, ESCs, VTXs, everything for several reasons. One is because I feel it's not just good for controlling humidity, if, but also if um, I think it keeps just the dust off of the components and I believe it helps with shock. I mean, it's rubbery. It's covering everything, and I believe it kind of helps com keep the components there and helps with vibration and shock. Maybe it, it doesn't, but it kind of makes sense. So I coat everything. Sometimes when I'm not sure about a build, I'll build it. For example, coat the ESCs and stuff, but I won't coat the FC if I'm not sure about it. Go fly it. If I can get it tuned and it works, because sometimes they just don't cooperate, then I'll come back and clean it up, and then I'll, I'll coat it. I won't, I won't necessarily, if I know it's going to work, because it's something I've always used, then I'll coat it from the beginning so I don't have to worry about it. First of all, I'm going to answer some questions. This is the original silicon conformal coating by MG Chemicals. This is what you used to buy maybe two years ago. Um, and then eventually, MG Chemicals came out with this one, which is called silicon modified conformal coating. But they didn't tell anybody what the difference was. You really had to dig. So it turns out they're actually exactly the same. The only difference is this has some kind of like UV reflectant, I don't know. The point is that you can take it with a black light, UV light, and look and it'll show you what areas are coated and if you miss a spot. That's really the only difference that I, that I found. I've looked it up and yeah, everything else is the same. This is just improved because it has that UV thing so you can see if you've missed a spot. If you find this stuff anywhere, you can buy it, it's still fine. Then, in Tree Hugging, California, this is actually hard to find. I went to Fry's and you can't even buy it there. I don't know why. They have this acrylic conformal coating, which I bought it. I was going to return it because I wasn't sure about it. It's still sitting there. I never used it. So I don't know about this. But I do know this stuff is awesome. I'm going to show you a clip. I already coated this and I already shot a video of it. But I want to show you how I coat an object and a couple of tips about when you're going to, going to go ahead and coat. Um, but the biggest things I can tell you is a lot of people go and put a bunch of it on it. No, no. Just clean your brush. Put very little on it. You don't need a lot. You just need one coat. Cover everything. And don't go crazy over it because I've never had a problem where this has caused something that works to stop working. It's, I, I've heard stories, but I've coated so many things and never had a problem at all. Just don't use too much because eventually when you want to go repair it and solder around it and whatnot, you will, um, you will, it'll be, it's too thick it's, and it looks like awful too. The other thing is, if you're going to use this stuff, make sure to clean off the flux. So after you're done soldering, grab Q-tips, like so, buy lots of these because uh, you're going to use a lot of them. And then use this stuff. You put it in a little cup, sort of like this. You just spray it on. And then you take the Q-tip, dab it on, and you clean everything. Then let it dry. You can, you can speed up drying by just heating it with a heat gun a little bit to help it dry, but give it at least an hour before you go and coat it more if you can and just so it's clean you don't want to coat over a bunch of flux how you usually end up after a, a build um and the other thing is you can actually solder through so here's a fortini this thing is not coated but if it were coated and you want to solder like let's say you want to change a component you can some people just go and heat it up because it'll burn it has a very high temperature rating so it tolerates heat that's the biggest difference between the silicone and the acrylic the acrylic won't take as much heat as this if this one this is a lot more flexy but the point is that you can actually hit it with a soldering iron and it'll burn and you can go right through it but i don't like to do that if you take the same 
um, flux remover and you take your q-tip which I might have a throw away here somewhere right this is one of these so if you if you take a um, a q-tip get it wet and you go over it like this you actually actually remove it and then you can work so let's say you just want to re replace a VTX on this side you clean it off clean the coating off with with a flux remover it'll come off and then you work on it let it dry coat it again I think that's it I'm really not missing anything you can coat ESC's before you shrink wrap them you can coat FC's all-in-one ESC's PDB's and then the cameras this camera I don't this is a new micro eagle and I've done a couple videos on it but I actually don't know how to take it apart like it doesn't have any screws for some reason maybe it's glued so I'm only actually gonna bother coating the outside of it but if you are gonna coat a camera that where you can see the sensor just make sure to coat around the sensor don't let a drop of this stuff land on the sensor because you'll ruin it now I think the biggest and most important thing when applying this is to not use a lot so make sure to clean the brush very well because you really don't need that much you just need it to spread and when it's kind of new like this one it's really liquid and it spreads nicely um, over time it gets a little bit thicker just as it ages I guess and it makes it a little harder to spread but when it's new it just spreads really easily so you don't have to do too much I think the reason you don't want to do too much is simply because it makes a mess it looks awful and if you ever want to work on it like solder through it and stuff it's just disgusting it's a mess but when you use very little it actually looks really good and you have no problems working on it later and you can easily remove it with some strong alcohol like 99% or with um, the flux remover it comes out the other thing is make sure not to touch the pins or fill up the holes where the pins go because you then will get any contact and that would suck and if there's a button for like a boot button of DSC also make sure not to put any in there because if you do it goes in there and under the button then you won't get any contact at all and you won't be able to reboot it with the button the other thing is I really only do one coat one coat is plenty just make sure you get everything and that's that's all you need the more brushing you do over it the more streaks you get which is really cosmetic to be honest but nah, I like it to look good so alright now I'm doing this is a uh, Nubi drone B brain V2 which is what's in here um, and yeah you would say why are you coating a you know a tiny whoop on an Acro B controller and the reason is honestly I believe that the silicon conformal coating is not simply for water, for for uh, humidity. I, I think also it helps reduce shock. You know, it kind of, maybe this is just me, but I, I feel it kind of keeps, helps keep the components, you know, attached to the board. <laughs> Even though if something comes unsoldered, you got bigger problems, but I, I know it's rubbery. So I, I feel it helps with shock. It looks kind of funny. If you see the light, you see how um, there you can really see how lumpy it is. But actually, it settles because it shrinks. As it dries, it starts shrinking and looks a lot better. I'll uh, I'll come back and show you a clip of it with uh, it dries, so you can see how it looks. It's not going to be perfectly smooth. I believe the board looks better without any on it, but it does uh, it does uh, dry out pretty nicely. But let's let's do this one real quick. I already show you how to do that one. Let's go ahead and coat this guy. And just clean out the brush real nice. You don't want to make a mess. I know some people just slap it on like, but no, just bare little, just a bit like that. And you're good. And if, if the sensor, were, if this side were the one with the sensor, just 
go around the sensor, take all the pins and make sure to cover them. And that's it. We'll do that. The quicker you work, the, the, the better it'll look when it's done because when it, it starts drying right away. So every time you run the brush over a spot that's starting to cure, it'll streak, which is no big deal, but it just looks better. Over here, of course, I want to be careful with the plugs. You don't want to touch them because otherwise you will lose contact. One, th some people that go really extreme in waterproofing, and I've done it before. You can actually attach the plugs and then coat around the plugs so it'll seal them in. But I'm not gonna do this. This is just for a little bit of waterproofing. And there it is. Now we just let it dry. So on this uh, newbie drone, a B Brain V2. See, I already coated this side and it's starting to shrink. So it kind of like gets smoother, even though there's some streaks to it. And yeah, I'll do the same thing. I'll cut this VTX, the other side of the VTX and the camera. Just before you, you start lathering it on, just look at the components. And if you see like plugs or buttons or sensors, not sensors, um, like the light sensor, just don't touch any of that. No buttons, no pins. And no sensors, because otherwise yeah, that 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 won't be good. And yeah, that's it. I, I know I have a friend who dropped a quad in salt water, and within 15 seconds it was dead. And what I'm gonna say dead is that what kills the components in water is electrolysis, and salt water speeds up electrolysis because there's electricity going through the metal object. So what it does is just corrodes and kind of falls apart. So it was in the water 15 seconds. He took it out dry it this and that but just when he started fixing it just the context and the um, the solder joints all crumbled now i have another friend who dropped his in the ocean too he shallow he was able to get it but it was fully conformal coated so he was able to clean it and get it back in the air you can in salt water is tricky because if any water seeps through any of the areas like the pins and stuff yeah it still it will get ruined but your chances of having components that survive are higher. And in fresh water, you can actually drop a quad in fresh water with no coating at all. Take it out, dry it, and it'll be fine. But this will save you a lot of drying time and possibly save the components too. Uh, so it's something that I, I always do, just as habit. Also, we've flown at night. We'll fly at night. We race at night. And sometimes there's intense fog. And the, the, these get soaked just because you're flying around in this thick fog and everything gets soaked and then people start getting glitches they can't fly because you you start getting some contacts that are basically short and then and then you, you can't you can't complete your night uh with this you can just fly through it just fine yeah you still can't see anything but at least you can fly <laughs> that's it silicon conformal coating i'm going to put links in the description for some of the things i'm going to put links for uh the conformal coating i'll i'll, I'll actually put links to this stuff too and if I can find it, of course, and anything else that I think is relevant, I'll go ahead and add it as well. So go ahead, buy these when you can and just stash them. As long as you keep them sealed, they don't dry up. Don't wait until two weeks before winter or rain season to buy them because people do buy them out. When I, you'll find that if you buy them like here over here in the Northern Hemisphere, you try to buy them in November, you're not gonna find any. Everybody's bought them out because everybody's getting them for winter. So that's it, let's wrap it up.